Hello there, my friends. Those of you that are struggling and trying to defeat Candida, well, I've got a little bit of video for you today. I want to dive right into the whole aspect of the sugar aspects of Candida. And as I've spoken about in some of my past videos, uh, this whole craze of eliminating all forms of sugar from your diet, including fruit, is just pure insanity. One of the most important tidbits of information I can share with anybody that is actually following some sort of candida diet that eliminates fruit sugars is, man, people that say this kind of stuff have absolutely no knowledge whatsoever about what they're talking about. They're just regurgitating things they've already seen in a video or that they've read. They have no practical basis behind that. And what I mean by that is they have no understanding of how the human body works, which is why I don't necessarily trust most doctors either because they don't either. You think they would. So my point, what I want to hit home right here, make sure everybody understands very clearly, is that sugar from fruit, let's say you eat something really sweet and fruity flavory, and you're afraid that's going to affect your candida. Well, I don't know how it would. It may affect thrush. It may affect if you have candida on your tongue a little bit, but it is not going to affect gut-related bacteria because sugar from fruit pretty much only takes five to six minutes to be completely digested through the stomach lining. In other words, what I'm getting at is sugar never even makes it to the intestines. So how could sugar from fruit affect candida if it never even makes it to where the candida lives? Hmm. Yeah. No, the things you need to watch out for are the processed sugars that the stomach can't get rid of. So those sugars that, like for example, white bread, uh, grains, when they're broken down, they are turned into like sugar alcohols and things like that. Those are all the bad things that you gotta watch out for. Also, while I've got you, there's some new cutting edge information that believe it or not, fats may be worse for you than sugars when you're trying to do a candida cleanse or a candida diet. The fats are what the candida actually feeds off of. So as we know, you can't eliminate sugar completely because then you starve the candida to death and then the candida has to reach out further to find those foodables. So what I mean by that is, is if you deprive candida of carbohydrates and sugar completely, it's gonna leave its current state and it's gonna dig on through to the other side. So it's gonna send little leachy legs and stuff to search for the food that it needs. It doesn't wanna die, it doesn't wanna to starve to death, so it wants to live. So it's going to adapt to its scenario so that it doesn't die. So if you're starving it, then it's gonna to have to find that food someplace else. And that's how candida becomes systemic. That's how it becomes life-threatening when you starve it. So don't starve it. Make sure you're having some fruit sugars every now and then. Make sure you're avoiding any types of processed sugars whatsoever. And try to avoid fatty foods. You know, dairy is a perfect example. Yogurt in the morning, you know, cheese on gluten-free bread. <laughs> That's not going to work. Remember, the inflammatories are bad too. So please try to avoid dairy products. Goat milk and things like that are okay. Um, avoid almond milks and almond nuts in general are inflammatory. They get stuck in the little pockets in your intestines and then they swell up. That's not good. When you're healthy, they're great. Um, stick with uh, coconut milk. Coconut and avocados are fantastic. They fight candida. They're fattening and we want to watch our fat levels, of course. Stay away from white breads and all that kind of crap. All that crappy carbohydrate stuff. The SIBO causers. Avoid all of that stuff, too. Uh, beef up your pineapple. That's right. Uh-oh, I just drove off the road. I better get stopping off. I better, whoop, I better stop making this video. Anyway, I just wanted to really say that you want to beef up your coconut, beef up your bromelain from your um, pineapples, beef up your <clears throat> biotin, beef up your magnesium, and really beef up that vitamin C. Vitamin C is very important during this detox time. And again, as I'm always saying over and over, please drink water, drink water, drink water, drink water. Oh my God, you got to drink water. If you do have oral thrush or the white tongue, remember that uh, hydrogen peroxide is fantastic to brush your teeth with. I put a couple of drops of tea tree oil on my toothbrush and then I brush really well. 
and then I brush my tongue really well and then I um, use a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and I make a little gargle and then I wash my tongue really well after that. You'll notice a big difference if you do that. Again, keep in mind that bromelain is a meat tenderizer, uh, the stuff that's found in pineapples. And I put that on my tongue just as an experiment. Woo boy, it sure did kill any of the uh, oral thrush or anything like that that I might have had. But let me tell you, it's a meat tenderizer, so I tenderized my tongue. That wasn't fun. It hurt for like an hour. <laughs> anyway, yours truly signing off, Sinatra Kennedy. Stay healthy, and remember, the number one part of your fight for being healthy is all up here. It's in your brain. That's 90% of the battle. So all you have to do is say to yourself every day when you wake up, ah, I'm going to take deep breaths. I'm going to oxygenate my cells. I'm going to totally alkanize my body. Ah, ah. Take care. Turn off the video!